quick disclaimer before the video starts, this video was intended to come out in early October, hence the references to Halloween in the episode. Uh, yeah, so, um, if there's there's some discrepancies there, blame Thomas, okay? I don't, don't, don't actually blame Thomas, but, yeah, the, the episode was supposed to come out in October, so, if I reference a Halloween or if they're Halloween stuff, that's why. That, this episode was intended to come way later, or way earlier in the year, and I didn't want to push it back, because, like, I wanted to do other Jackbox episodes this year, and I was like, okay, well, I, I can't pause this whole thing, you know? Four, five has come out eventually, so, you know, I was just gonna do it now. Very sorry for people who love Halloween. There's probably gonna be another video like this, where it's intended, to, it was intended to come out in Halloween, but I missed a lot of Halloween episodes. Um, specifically one about, like, some bear or something, I don't know. Anyways, so yeah, uh, straight to the episode. Previously on Caden Comics. Hello, comic dudes. Happy Thomas Day. What that means is very, very complicated. It's Thomas's birthday. Right now, Mike is finishing up the decorations in the living room, and Thomas is gonna be here any minute. And I'm left with everything else that needs to get done with the party, like entertainment and such. But I'm a procrastinator, so I'm just gonna go check on Mike now. What it be, Mike? How's the party prep going? I mean, all right, I guess. I'm, I'm doing the finishing touches. What the heck, you only have like two balloons done, and even they look depressed. You bought water balloons, dummy. You got the entertainment ready? Not at all. If this is what I think it is, Mike, then our entertainment problems will be solved. A brand new... Yo-yo! What the heck? Oh no. Hey, Kaden, your door was unlocked. No! Now, if you haven't seen the past two gatherings here at the Caden Comics residence, allow me to explain to you all how this Jackbox Party Pack thing works. Jackbox Party Packs are a collection of five party games contained within one application, usually costing around 20 bucks or so. As long as one person has the application installed, they can host the game for as many people as they want for as long as they want. And at the end, we average out the score of all the games to make the total pack score. Shown on the screen are the scores of Jackbox Party Pack 1, 2, and 3. And today is the day that we cover four. The games in today's pack are Monster Seeking Monster, which seems to be perfect for the season, Civic Doodle, which appears to be the obligatory drawing game for this pack, Survive the Internet, which seems to be something something Windows 98 reference, Bracketeering, which honestly not sure on this one, and last but probably least, Fibage 3. Without any further ado, let's just get straight into the world of Jackbox Party Pack. Four. Jackbox again? What are you against, Swan? Listen, it isn't just my curse to bear. You all have to deal with it as well. Eh, I don't mind too much. As long as I'm hanging out with my friends on my birthday, it's all okay. Exactly, Thomas. Right, so stop being such a loser and let's play a good game for once. <laughs> Monster Seeking Monsters. You're a monster! Do you hate dating apps and the disastrous effects they've had on the societal structures? Do you hate spooks such as goobs and goblins and such? Well, don't worry, you'll be perfectly fine with this one. Welcome to the greatest bachelor show of all time. This game takes place over the course of six nights. Each night consists of each player sending four text messages to all other players, then having to choose one person to go out with for the night. And if that person picks you back, you all go on a date. This relationship cannot be one way, however, so you have to hope they love you as well. Thomas. I know it's your birthday and all, but will you go out on a date with me? And if the date is successful, as I just mentioned, then you both gain a heart. Whoever ends up with the most hearts by the end of the game is the winner. Now, if this sounds boring, then you'd be right. However, this is just the surface level of the game before you take the twist into account. Secretly, every single player is a monster in disguise. At the beginning of the game, you're told what monster you are and what your secret quirks are. Some of these quirks can help you get more hearts if you play your cards right, or blow up in your face if you're not careful. At the end of every night, whichever un-unmasked monster has the most hearts will have their monster identity revealed, and their gimmick spelled out to everyone. I'm a squid monster, which means I have the ability to help me. Oh my god, Michael, you're a lemon! Also, I, th I think a robot will join your game. He he's pretty simple. Every night he will lose one heart, but will gain one heart for everyone who tries to text or date him. If he has the least number of hearts by the end of the game, then everyone loses because of the new hatred for humanity that he has gained. I really like the art style in this game mode, which is true for most, if not all, Jackbox games I've played through, so I don't think I'm saying anything too groundbreaking here. Anyways, a solid 8 out of 10 for this game. I think it's really creative and well executed, and a great start for for not only the season, not only for Thomas's birthday, but the the, the episode. All right, guys, rate the game. Uh, t uh, five out of ten. Pie. Well, Tom, since it's your birthday, we're gonna let you pick the next game. 
Um, how about the Civic Doodle one? Looks pretty neat. Does he know it's a drawing game? What? A poker? I barely know it! That's right, it's time to play the drawing game. In this drawing game, you play as the scum of the earth. Vandals. You go across this town and defile all of the points of interest that are located across the map. Rounds start with everyone being sent to a part of town, then once you arrive, there's a blank wall shown with only one squiggle left remaining. Then players need to complete said drawing to the best of their ability, then everyone votes on who completes the drawing the best, which is honestly a really fun concept for a Jackbox game. Also, when watching the drawers draw, you can use emoticons on your device to gauge how you're feeling on their art, and at the end of the round, after the votes are cast, the person who got the most of a specific emoticon will get both bonus points. Once they're done drawing, the rest of the group need to continue off of that drawing, and so on and so forth until you finish that area, and everyone had gotten to play. Alright, here's my drawing. Please don't do anything stupid, Michael. I'm ashamed that you think I'd do that. Don't worry, I got this. However, this isn't the only possible round. There's this one where you're building something piece by piece, as well as many other things. This is code word for loving the variety, but only mentioning one thing. Guys, I heard a rumor that if you spray paint in your mouth, then it improves your cholesterol. Really? All that deep fried butter is literally killing me. You got me? Got you. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Guys, that is disinfectant. Alright, I'll see you all on the, the other side. Mm. Yeah, deserved. I personally really like the vibes of this game. I don't know, something about the map aesthetic, if that's a thing, is just really appealing to me. The gameplay here is also really solid, like most drawing games. But when it comes down to it, the drawing games also need to succeed in being able to have anyone and everyone be able to have a good time and an easy laugh, and I think this game succeeds in that. 7.5 out of 10 on the Jackbox epicness scale of coolness. Rate the game. Uh, <laughs> 2, 7, 5. If I knew it was a drawing game, I wouldn't have picked it. Well, that's great, because we took it into our own hands when it came to drawing on your cake. How about I choose the next one? I know a thing or two about what you like. Alright, well, the last ones we have are Bracketeering, uh, Fibage 3, and Survive the Internet. The Internet! Welcome to the internet. Can you survive? Can you propagandize? Let's find out. When the game starts, each player gets a prompt on their device. Then, once everyone answers said prompt, it will be gathered by the game and distributed back to all the players for them to make them seem like the bad person based on their quote. For example, if the question was, do you like ice cream, and someone puts, for sure, but I hate vanilla ice but then they got cut off because of the character limit. Okay, I, that, that's the only way I can make this joke work. And then someone can have their title be American rapper Vanilla Ice has sadly passed away, making it seem like the person was hating on this person's death. Hey Tom, wanna play poker? 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 I barely- You see how it works here, you know? You can make it seem like someone's a horrible person based on stuff that's completely out of context. Then everyone votes on whose combo was the most stupid with both parties getting points, being the comment writer and the headline writer. And whoever has the most points by the end is crowned the winner. I really like this game mainly because I do this every single day when talking with my friends. Taking something someone has said innocently out of context and making them look like an idiot is the best way to have a fun time. The art style here is actually really cool. It takes how the old Windows 98 system was structured, but gives it a low-poly look, and my lord, is it charming. Anything in low-poly is really nice in my opinion, and here it's executed really well. I especially like all the references to early internet humor, or as I like to call it, impact font cat memes. Easy 8 out of 10 on the Jackbox score for this game. I think it's really cool, and a great time. Alright guys, rate the game! Mm, 9. 8. Thank goodness that's over with. I can't handle being misrepresented anymore. Local man comments in, You son of a- Do you love basketball? Yes. Do you love brackets? Probably not. Well, welcome to Bracketeering, which has nothing to do with basketball. Your one-stop shop for fun surrounding data. This is just gaspionage again, isn't it? Once you start the game, everyone is asked a question, then said questions are sent into a bracket again to March Madness to face off against each other, until one answer is crowned the winner. This is cool in concept, I just wish there was more variety in this game. There's barely anything that can catch you off guard, and the questions don't leave the most wiggle room to be funny. Kaden, where does your eight ball come from? Bacon. Okay. Where does the Comic Crew Inc. name come from? Bacon. And finally, um, where, where the heck is Ethan? 
Don't, don't say it. Bacon! There aren't too many reasons to play this over just regular Quiplash, because it's just the same thing, but here the time it takes to pick a winner is quadrupled, and that leads to the shock value of a lot of jokes to taper off a lot of the time before the final showdown. The visuals of this game are actually pretty lame, the Vaporwave 80s theming is cool and all, it's just done so much all the time in this day and age, to the point where it just gets kind of stale and repetitive. Regardless, the visuals of this game do make it feel pretty epic at times, especially during the voting segments. 5.5 out of 10 on the epic scale for this one, just nothing too special. Alright guys, rate the game. It's bad. Two out of two. <laughs> Four. Well, that blew. I don't know. After going all day without Quiplash, uh, this really helps take it off the edge. Well, don't worry guys, because we only have one more game left, so let's just get done with it. Uh, what is it? Fabage 3. Another one? And I'll talk about Fibosh 3. In Jackbox Party Pack 1, I thought Fibosh was entertaining enough and was honestly pretty fun because deception is my specialty, but in Jackbox Party Pack 2, they had another Fibosh, which was just the same thing with minorly tweaked visuals. And now in Jackbox Party Pack 4, they had the audacity to make another sequel to this game. I don't hate Fibosh, I'm just tired, okay? Four games, three sequels. I've never seen it done. You're <laughs> not as tired as me. What the heck is wrong with you? Remember the itch? Oh, so you are a loser. Basic synopsis of Fibage is as follows. Someone picks a trivia genre, a question is randomly chosen and shown, everyone writes down what they think it is, then all of your answers are shown amongst the real ones. You get points for answering right, and points for tricking people into picking the lie you put up there. This game is super fun because tricking people you've grown to trust is truly the best genre of party game. But I just feel this version of Fibage doesn't add all too much to the equation. The only thing that changed is the 70s inspired visuals, which I really love, but that's just the only thing that's changed. Anyways, solid 6 out of 10 game, just getting stale now. So. Alright guys, rate the game. 9, I'm 7, 2. 10. Finally a good one. It's on, um, can you put on a quick game of quick flash? I really hit that itch right now. Uh, sure, fine. Uh, do you want the first or the second one? Uh, hey! Okay, fine. Two hours later. Look at the time, it's time to wish Thomas a happy birthday! Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Thomas, happy birthday to you. Being 65 sure has its benefits. Louis tickets are cheaper, all your clothes are back in style, people move to give you their seat. Your taste in music is now retro, oh so retro. No judgment maps. Now that's too old. Jackbox Party Pack 4, on average when you add up all the scores, earned a 7 out of 10, which is actually pretty decent. As much as I like some of the games here, it just kind of feels like this is one of the most forgotten packs of all time. Whenever you look at like the limelight it's had in the internet and pop culture, this pack is definitely one of the lower ones on the list, right next to one. Which kind of makes me feel bad because I actually really enjoyed it and I feel like it should have earned a little bit more spotlight and should have been remembered a little bit more. I hope you all enjoyed Thomas's birthday celebration as much as I did. And you know what I'm going to enjoy more than you enjoying Thomas's birthday celebration? going through Thomas's wallet that I swiped off him.